Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's webinar. Uh, uh, it's really exciting to have uh, uh, Dr. Bhutan Mohammed Rahman with us, um, who will be talking to us about uh, mathematical modeling of infectious disease during an outbreak. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him before he gives the presentation. So Bhutan is someone I, uh, I came to know when I came to Sussex a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, before coming to Sussex, Bhutan also had his BSc at um, uh, BSc and MSc from Salah Eddin University of Erbil and his PhD in Mathematical Biology from the University of Sussex in the UK, where he worked with Dr. Yulia and Dr. Constantine. And his PhD thesis led to the development of new neuronal network models with both discrete and distributed delays in connections between nodes alongside the analysis of the stability properties of such systems. And uh, his research lies in the area of applied mathematics in the context of delay differential equations and the applications to modeling neuronal, uh, neural and complex networks. So because time delays play an important role in analyzing the behavior of such networks as they allow one to account for inevitable delays in transmission, finished speed of signal propagation and delayed connection. And uh, Bhutan is currently a lecturer in mathematics at the University of Pakistan, Hula. He, was, uh, he has previously held positions that include mathematics, uh, tutor at the Bachelor of Engineering and Mathematics, ISC University of Sussex, associate tutor at the Bachelor of Mathematics, University of Sussex, assistant lecturer and visiting assistant lecturer at Salahaddin University, Erbil, and Suran University, respectively. Um, so it's really exciting to have Bhutan with us today. And um, before I let him start the presentation, I have to say that this is a presentation about how mathematical modeling can be applied to uh, predict disease outbreak and intervention and uh, how that can inform interventions. It's not about COVID-19 or epidemiology of COVID-19. So during question and answers, I'll encourage us to talk, uh, to ask questions that are relevant to uh, mathematical modeling in the uh, in in the face of outbreaks. Thank you very much. So, Bhutan, the stage is all yours. All right. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you for that nice presentation. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about um, mathematical modeling of infectious disease during an outbreak. So, um, the, the the that's the outline which um, I'm going to focus on. I'll walk you through all this. Um, let's say um, uh, materials today. So how can we, um, let's say, modeling or outbreak modeling steps? I'll, t I'll, I'll uh, discuss about uh, the steps that uh, mathematicians do. And then um, how math mathematicians build the model for an outbreak, um, so such as um, a, a shape of infection disease outbreak, um, and then building infection disease um, outbreak. And then I will also talk about basic reproduction number, uh, which is called R0. Um, this is, um, th those days, it's, uh, um, um, uh, people are t talking about this R0 in, in use. So um, I will um, discuss about that as well. So what can we do then is to, pre um, wh what do you call it? And then I will um, uh, discuss about forecast um, SARS-CoV-2 in the Middle East in general. And then I have, um, I will show some, um, let's say, uh, data, one of the, my uh, and Russell's with, my, with some of my collaborating in Nigeria. Um, so about Nigeria, which is we are um, doing a modeling there. So this is um, the outbreak modeling steps. What mathematicians do is first, if you look at the graph in that side, um, we, we uh, when the what you call disease enters the a population or a, a country or a place, what we start is um, collecting the data. So um, so look at that. We have um, I mean a, 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 some of data here, and then we try to uh, model um, and then see how um, uh, how this uh, let's say uh, kind of uh, the shape going. And then this, the, the shape is, is here, which, which is without um, social distancing. Um, and then how about if you introduce some social distance? If you, if you look at that, the number of cases taking off really um, fast, but 
Um, here, the number of cases, which is y axis, um, it tells us the number of cases per day. So uh, after, um, let's say, introducing some social distancing like um, lockdown or whatever, I mean, the, what, what do you call it? Washing our hands, um, uh, not going out if it's not, um, let's say, um, if you're not really in need. And uh, those things are um, social distancing. After, if you see, if you, um, let's say, introduce um, some social distance, um, social distancing, you can see the, the curve is um, not, um, I mean, the number of cases per day is not getting that high um, each day. So, um, so uh, as I said in the beginning, um, so we have um, kind of uh, a characteristic shape for all the outbreaks. So if you can see all the, um, let's say, out uh, disease that entering the uh, population, you can have um, kind of the same characteristic, characteristic shapes. So um, see, this is an, um, what you call cholera in Iraq in 2015. Um, the, the, I mean, the disease enters the population and then you, see the, you can see the number of cases goes a bit high and then it gets a peak and then again it slows down um, and then gets to near zero. So uh, that's, um, I mean, usually if you see any kind of disease, any, um, let's say, um, uh, in, in any outbreak, that's um, the, the same kind of characteristic um, shape we have. Um, see, we have uh, in, um, in 2014 in West Africa, Ebola epidemic. So if you see then, um, again, it's kind of the same shape. Um, the, the number of cases, one is the Ebola um, enters the population there. So um, people start getting it and then um, the, the number of cases takes off until it gets peak and then again it goes down and then um, goes to the near to the zero either so either um, finding a vaccine or um, finding as we are currently now in um, in the lockdown totally lockdown so not going out or not um, let's say meet those um, infected people so that um, the number of infected getting high so at some point um, it gets peak and then again goes down. So this is um, um, the active cases that have uh, got this um, graphs on the internet. So this is um, uh, the cases or COVID-19 cases in um, what you call uh, in China. So again, it's, it's kind of the same. It go, it, 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 the COVID or the virus uh, uh, goes in the population and then the number of cases um, go or takes off and then gets peak, and then again, um, whether uh, after, uh, if, you, if you see after 20, 23rd of something, uh, what do you call it, some, uh, mid of February, so um, the number of cases uh, reduces down and then um, goes below the, I mean, close to the one. So um, again, uh, sorry, zero. Um, um, and here, if you look at that, um, we have all the, um, I mean, this is a bit um, long, that graph. So, but you can see all the countries that following the same um, direction, um, the number of cases um, here, that, that, that place when earlier a development in the number of cases, and then there when accelerate, um, and then there when, um, I, I mean, it takes off and gets peak exactly here, and then when people start to recovery or, um, not mixing, I, I mean, when people start getting recovery, that the number of cases daily gets, um, because you're taking away those people that are recovered from the, um, what you call it, infected um, people. So it gets um, down if you look at the shape. So this is, um, as I said, all the cases that we have, um, all the shapes, uh, whatever disease you see, um, we kind of having the same char characteristic shapes, but in a different, maybe um, in, a, in a different situation, in a different country, in a different, um, uh, it, it changes. But at, uh, out of that, we have the same kind of shape. So um, I'll start to um, talk about how mathematicians built a model 
So this is an earlier, uh, in an early outbreak. Um, that's what, um, uh, I mean, if you, you may have heard about um, exponential function or exponential growth, um, which is we call a geometric progression here. So for example, if, um, if you have um, one case in the, in the day zero, which is infected, either imported into the um, country or the people getting the virus in the day zero, for example, um, you, you have one cases, and then that case is infected three other people, which is what we have here, um, uh, infected three other people. So if you, if you see, um, then in day one, we have three people. And then if, on average, these three people, again, infected three others, and then in day two, you can see you have um, nine cases. And then that's how it goes. If, if this, um, let's say, um, each of these three or nine infected three others, um, you get 27 in a day three. So which is called geometric progression. So this is simply a kind of exponential function. The I stands for the number of um, infected people. And then this T is the number of days. So we have then um, since uh, every infected people um, infected three others, then, then we can say three to the power T. And um, you can see, I mean, um, the, if you plug in um, one here, you get three, which is, it tells you the number, uh, the, in day one, you get um, three infected people in the population. And day two, that's how it um, rises the number of cases. So, and then if you graph that, but as I said, this is an area now bit. So if you graph that, that geometry, uh, let's say, um, that exponential function. This is what happened when you can compare with the real data. Let's say this is uh, one of the um, real data that we have, uh, um, the curve. And then if you, let's say, um, graph um, or sketch that i t equal to 3 to the power t. And as I said, this is um, an average of three new cases infected per day. So um, the number, it goes high and then higher. So it's not stopping, exponential. That's why um, exponential functions um, is all right in the beginning or it's early in the outbreak. We can um, start modeling with that. But then later when um, it gets peak, then it's no longer work, that exponential function. Um, so we need to think um, another model. What, that's what I've said in the first slide, where we're trying to collect the data and then um, uh, we try to uh, model and then see what kind of model we can um, use. So now um, it's since we can then refine the model because this, this is not um, kind of um, getting or catching all the um, shapes that um, we have uh, in an um, outbreak. So I will then start thinking another uh, model though. I mean, uh, all mathematicians, that's how um, we model. So um, trying to introduce two um, compartment here. So the first compartment we call it a susceptible population. Um, so uh, in, uh, the population that um, in the absence of um, any vaccine, so, um, and then we don't have kind of any uh, vaccine yet for, for, for the population. So susceptible compartment, if you, the, the green knot here. And then this is um, an infected compartment. So um, then um, we can introduce that model. I will, I, I've, I've, I've put the equations. So I know those, um, I mean, not all, all of you are mathematician, but I will explain what all, all, all this, um, let's say, um, what you call uh, um, equations are stands for and how, how we get, um, let's say, um, introduce all these um, equ equations or uh, differential equations. So as I said, we have two compartments. So the first is susceptible people and then infected. So uh, ds by dt, for those that are um, not uh, familiar with the differential equation or derivative, this is a rate of change the instantaneous rate of change for susceptible people. If you look at that, we have um, minus beta S times I. So S, as I said, as, as, we, as I defined before, is susceptible people that the people um, that um, are ready to get infected. And once it meets, if you look at that S times I, 
once it, it meets an infected people, an infected person, it, it gets, um, let's say, the disease. So that's why um, if you see, I have for that negative day in the Ferris equation. So that negative, what does that mean? It means um, we're reducing it. We are decreasing the number of susceptible pe people in the population because we are taking away for those, um, let's say, um, number. So that's why um, you can see that negative there. And then enters a, a new compartment, which is uh, become positive, right? As I said, in the beginning, we have um, susceptible, um, let's say, population. And then once it meets um, a, a, a guy or an infected people, um, then it become directly become infected and then it's no longer susceptible. So that's why it mo moves that compartment and then enters the new, um, let's say, population or enters a new um, compartment, which is called, um, what do you call it, infected. So those people are infected. And then uh, we have only one parameter here. So the parameter um, called rate of infection. So um, this parameter is really important here, which is, um, um, I mean, the, uh, the, that parameter tells us um, about, let's say, um, prevent or um, from the disease or, um, and then um, if you look at, if you graph that, um, you can see, um, we have that. Um, this is what happened when you um, compare a real data with that compartment that I've, I've mentioned. Um, so then you can see the epidemic um, is no longer grows, which is good. That's what we want. At some at some point, it gets peak, and then. Uh, but again, because um, we need to again introduce those uh, people that. Um, what you call get recovered from it. So see the curve or the actual data gets down. So, but our model, our simple model, which is called SI model, um, the, in, in that case is um, what you call, it's not capturing those that infect, uh, sorry, recovery from the disease. So um, see, then I can, uh, then we can add a new compartment, which is called the recovery. Or we can call it removed, either recovered from the disease or, um, um, I mean, dead um, or death uh, people. So, um, and then we can then add another um, equation within the, let's say, our system of differential equation. So, as the, the first two equations is the same, as I said, so um, the, we have susceptible people, the change of rate of change of susceptible individuals, which is ds by dt. And then um, equal to minus s minus beta s i, um, which is those people that get infected, and then they are no longer in the um, susceptible. Um, sorry, um, just one minute. Give me. Sorry, yeah, the just went off. Um, so um, um, if you see the, the, the second compartment that we have is um, what you call it, infected. And then the last one is um, kind of getting a new compartment, which is um, what we call a, um, what do you call a um, infected uh, or uh, recovered, as I said. Um, so if you see the, the second uh, differential equation, we have, um, what do you call it, minus i. So um, so if you look at that, um, we have uh, minus um, i or alpha i. So i is those that recover from um, what do you call it. Um, we're taking away uh, those people that recovered. So um, this is, uh, sorry, this, this, this compartment should be i, oh, sorry, r. So we have then um, taking away um, um, what do you call it, recovery people from the what you call a uh, infected um, compartment so this is um, um, what you call a uh, recovered people from and then they they uh, they entered a new compartment which is called recovery so um, we have then um, as I said this is um, SIR model that's what you call it so now we have only two parameters so the first parameter tells us about, about uh, rate of infection. And then the second, which is alpha, 
is the rate of recovery. So those um, are recovered from the, what you call a um, disease. So this is um, kind of um, incubation period, um, the time that um, the people um, getting, um, or duration of uh, um, what you call uh, the duration of the, getting the disease. Right, so, um, and then if you, as I said, um, now you can uh, compare the real data with the, um, what you call it, um, with the, um, the real data with the model. So if you see the red line is um, the, the model that we are trying to um, model any kind of disease uh, for any kind of outbreak. So, and then the blacking of the black dots the, the data is a real data. So you can see the, um, the data is capturing the, um, the whole shape. So that's why uh, would you use that uh, in very, really simple uh, model. We can capture the whole, um, let's say, um, uh, epidemic curve, which is epidemic shape. So it captures the whole epidemic curve with only two parameters. So um, this was all, all about, I mean, the, how do we, um, let's say, um, develop a model from the uh, beginning. So now, all um, as you've seen um, in the news, you've uh, you've heard a lot about um, let's say basic reproduction number, which is R naught. You've seen um, let's say public health or um, governments they do talk about this um, what do you call it um, um, this uh, R naught, which is um, simply is just um, tells us the number of cases, the number of the, the number of um, cases of the disease arising from each uh, of the primary cases. So, um, for example, if one person gets a disease, um, is infecting how many other people? So it's basically is that the basic reproduction number. So um, you can see um, this is the what you call the equation of the basic reproduction number, which is uh, I mean the infection infection rate, which is beta, times the duration of an infection. So for how many days that in our infected people um, stays in that, um, let's say, getting um, or recovering from that disease. So for now, I think uh, the WHO um, introduced 14 days. Um, some, uh, some, let's say, uh, they do the, 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 the kind of this, they find some a vaccine in the UK. Um, um, recently, which is they reduced that uh, duration of infection from 14 to 9, so which is uh, really good um, so far. So if you look at the, the graph from the other side, um, you see this is the number of infected people. And um, if, if R is really high, um, you can see the blue line. Um, um, I mean, if it's really, really high, so the number of cases, um, let's say it's higher than 1, if R is higher than one, um, so let's say two, three, which is, I think, now um, R for um, what you call a COVID-19 um, is between two to three, which is, it means every individual can infect it two or until three other people. So, which is um, then the, out, the outbreak or the um, outbreak would happen. Uh, because the number of cases is still rising. But um, for, for the Ebola, I think it's 1.5 uh, to 1.9. I do have, I do um, write down for some, some of that. For the measles, it was really high, which is 12 to 18. And then for smallpox, it was between 3 to 6. Um, chickenpox was between 10 to 12. And then for HIV, um, it is um, between two and five. That's what they in introduced. So for the um, uh, the common flu or the common cold is between two and two and uh, three. So I mean, since we are uh, still we are in the beginning of the, we cannot. Um, it's really difficult to find um, exactly the number of um, what do you call a um, basic reduction number. So, but it simply is the infection rate and then times the number of um, people, susceptible people, um, times the, what do you call a um, duration of infection. All right, so this was, um, uh, 
yeah, the, the if 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 you look at the what you call it the blue curve when um, the basic reproduction number is really high. So in in really small days of um, I mean in in a, um, in a few days you can see the number of um, let's say infected people are gets really high. But um, if if you look at the what you call uh, the other curve, the blue curve. Um, so sorry, the yellow curve. You can see um, after some or after thirty or sixty days, then the number of people getting um, higher and higher. So how how can we then reduce that um, that number? So for example, um, I mean WHO or public health or public health governments, they trying to, let's say, introduce, um, which is called the beta, um, let's say, parameter here. They introduce new um, uh, intervention, so to prevent the disease, such as in the beginning, if you, if you, um, they, they've, they've said, um, wash your hands regularly, so which is, again, it's um, kind of, um, uh, and then don't go to the crowd place, and then uh, don't go to let's say um, uh, outside. And, and then if if it's um, if if you are not in need, um, and then don't, uh, that's what uh, public health earning the um, go, let's say the population or the their country to introduce a different control measures. And then um, we still, I mean, I, I think recently the in the in the UK. Um, they've said um, people uh, don't don't go out without having um, you um, mask put on. So uh, what that's I think the, the new um, control measures um, after the lockdown, they they trying to let's say um, people uh, coming out because we still have don't have um, the, the, the what do you call a uh, um, any vaccine. So um, kind of having different. Um, uh, control measures. So, uh, and then you can see the, the, the uh, reducing that or con uh, introducing those control measures, you can see um, the R gets lower, um, which is, um, as I said, after 30 something days, then you can see the number of infected people rising. But um, see if um, if R gets below one, well, that's what all um, public health and uh, medical government looking for to reduce R um, below the threshold of one. So uh, which is when then um, the outbreak is under control because uh, what does um, what, what if, if R is one? If R not is one, it means um, from every single person the other. Other one, one, only one people get infected. But if it's below one, um, if it's below one, then um, let's say from two or three people, then one people get it uh, or get infected. So it means um, from two people, one. If let's say if it's half, if R not is half, it means from two infected people, only one people um, get infected. So. And then, um, then uh, it means the outbreak is under control um, after introducing all these, um, let's say, uh, measures. Right. So this is um, one of my recent, um, what do you call, publication, which is um, I've done it with a, um, one of my collaborators in Italy, and then one of, uh, other one in Saladin University. So um, what what we what we have done is just kind of a review. From all the let's say papers um, that I mean until uh, mid of um, March that they um, let's say call, uh, or modeling the um, the infection disease and then they did find out the basic reproduction number, which was if you look at the from the shape it was um, uh, and uh, I mean the basic reproduction number is up to fourteen. And then from the I mean, different countries in China, in um, what do you call uh, in uh, UK, in the US, they all I mean they, they did find out the uh, basic production number in different places in different area. What we have done is collecting all the modules and then um, what kind of let's say or discussing what kind of um, let's say 
um, control, control measures they've used. Um, so, um, and then uh, once I've, I find out or I'll, I'll collect, I've collected all these papers, where then we've seen that the basic reproduction number in, uh, in Wuhan is about to die out. I mean, it, it was until after introducing the, um, the lockdown of the whole country, um, which is you can no allow to go out and then no people coming into the Wuhan. Um, and then it was uh, uh, the, the basic reduction number there was reached below one. So it means um, the disease is under control. But how about the rest of the world? They are still, let's say, um, in, in a different, um, um, what do you call it, defining different control measures. Right, so um, you can see I've, I've said, um, I, I've discussed the three different models, which is um, exponential and then SI, SIR model. So, and then you can, you can even define more compartment, um, which is introducing new, um, let's say, um, compartment within the model. So you can you can then um, capture or um, or you can um, earn or public health that what kind of um, let's say uh, measures to introduce uh, to the public. Um, so um, what, what one of the uh, what do you call it, modulars or what, the my supervisors in the Sussex University recently they published a. Uh, um, um, an article which is, says um, in the midst of the, this kind of a second wave of um, um, coronavirus in the sec in the middle of July might be happen. So I mean uh, that their their models can nearly seventy equations something. But um, this this one the, the the I mean the the second there's a module here. Um, I'm recently working on that module which is I have introduced lockdown. Um, within the compartment or the number of compartments. So, and then see how can you, um, let's say, or what's the effect of um, um, the lockdown for the wholly um, susceptible population. Um, so, um, and then the other papers they've um, published, and then all the, uh, is still in the peer review, um, but WHO, they, published in their web page. So all the data they have got it um, from the WHO web page. So um, what I've done in the paper, I've just, um, for all the, what you call using SIR model, the very basic model, without any other compartment, um, just SIR means susceptible, infected, and then recovery um, compartments. I did um, find the basic reproduction for the whole Middle East countries, which is Iraq is kind of um, just below four, and then Turkey it was. Um, um, I mean, the basic reproduction number is just when first you introduce. Um, I mean, when uh, as I said, is uh, the number of infection um, times the duration of a. Uh, infected. So, and then if you look at that, that, that all the countries in the Middle East have um, find a, a basic reduction number. So, this is um, again in that paper, which is Iran it was kind of an epicenter for the whole Middle East. So, that's why I, I was thinking to um, kind of, let's see, um, and uh, find uh, or collect all the data in the um, what you call WHO, uh, all for all the countries, like, uh, I mean, for the all countries in the Middle East. So if you look at that, Iran was kind of the first um, country got infected or um, spreading the disease in the city of Qom. Um, so, um, uh, the, and then the number of cases, it was really getting um, really high. I and mean, then all, I mean, most of the countries in the Middle East um, imported cases from Iran. So um, what, what, I, what I am doing here, or what I have done in that article, is um, collecting all the data and then see um, after how many weeks, let's say, Turkey might follow Iran. And then those data is, um, I mean, the, this paper is up, uh, up to 9th of April, if you see. So 
you can see Iraq uh, after one, uh, one or up to 1.5 week might follow Iraq um, from the, what do you call it, from the, um, the number of cases. And then Bahrain is again kind of up to a week might follow um, the same thing that what happens in Iran. And then Oman is to, um, to, to three um, weeks is uh, behind Iran. My, if um, not uh, introducing really strong measures, um, which is introduced by the WHO, uh, my, uh, some, uh, the same thing might happen as Iran. So, and then the other countries like Qatar is um, up to three weeks, and then Saudi Arabia is three to, um, up to 3.5 something weeks is below the, I mean, is after Iran. So uh, all other countries like Emirates, and then uh, Oman, Jordan, Egypt, um, Lebanon, Palestine, um, Israel is, I, I mean, you can see um, um, the differences or, or, I mean, compare with the uh, Iran. And then see uh, another, another kind of, um, and we can, uh, we can notice another thing here, some of the countries here, um, the number of cases uh, gets really high, which is called exponential function. If you've seen in the beginning, I did, uh, uh, I did discuss exponential. So um, those, um, the number of cases getting really high, I mean, uh, after some of the uh, in few, let's say, weeks, um, gets really high. So this is called exponential functions. And then we have some other countries that are not getting really high, which is because they might introduce some um, intervention, uh, which is kind of uh, closing the border, closing the airport, um, this because those are all affecting. Um, uh, and then this is kind of, um, we call it in our model, in SIR model, which is uh, goes to the beta, because not all the uh, susceptible population uh, ha have a contact with the infected population. That's why you reduce the number of um, infected by um, introducing different measures, as I said. So the measures here, um, for example, in Iraq or in Lebanon, you see the number, they do have the cases, but not, um, uh, let's say, um, spreading that fast. Because um, uh, I do not remember exact dates for Iraq, um, for Kurdistan, um, they closed like in the um, end of uh, February, something they closed all the universities and um, schools. That's why the number of cases wasn't that high in the beginning. And then um, they um, locked down the whole, um, let's say, country. So that wa that's why the number of cases didn't um, go, um, let's say, takes off really fast. So um, as I said, this is all the, just tracking um, the number of uh, cases within the, um, all the Middle East countries. And uh, with Mohammed Yahu and Grace Agba in Nigeria, this, um, and then two collaborates in Fouad and Imaji in Salah Hajin University, we're still um, um, in process to, to um, find uh, what you call to model, model the cases in Nigeria. So um, it was the, the, the dots, um, the dots are um, the data that I got from uh, WHO website, um, um, World Health Organization, Health, World Health Organization. So um, the, what do you call the red line? You can see the, um, uh, the, the module that we have um, SIR model. And then, and the, what do you call it? The dots are blue dot uh, data. This is a real data from Nigeria. You can see it's nicely following the, the module. But as I said, this was in the um, mid of um, the data is up to um, mid of um, April. So, um, and then we did find out the basic reproduction number in Nigeria and then in Iraq, in other countries. Um, this, this paper is kind of um, focusing on um, six, uh, six countries that introduced that, um, what do you call it? Uh, affected in by the introduced in the WHO web, website. So one of them is Nigeria, Iraq, and then some other um, in different content uh, areas. So and then basic reproduction number in Nigeria is kind of 3.1. So um, 
So that was, as I said, in April. So it might change um, now because the, 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 the more information, the more, um, let's say, defining, the more control measures, it, it, is, it, it will affect in that basic reduction number. So the more data available, we can um, see the more kind of shade. Um, right, so this um, this graphs that I've taken uh, from the um, the web page, um, the the sources are there. So if you look at the uh, what do you call uh, the, the the data, um, there is um, up to I think twenty something um, May twenty five of May. So you can see those grays are in real data. Um, see the curves uh, get, goes up and then it's some somewhere goes peak but then see you can you can see it some some uh, I mean it's again get, it's starting to getting higher uh, even in Iraq um, where we, we, we think it's getting uh, the peak of the what do you call a, of uh, the curve but see again it's rising so um, uh, as I said, um, in the absence of vaccine, um, the only thing that works is um, introducing um, control measures such as curfew or lockdown the countries. That's the only um, control measures we have at the, um, the absence of the control, um, other control measures. So um, see this, the other two, these two graphs over there, is one of them is Iraq uh, effective reproduction number, which is um, this reproduction number it tells us the daily, right, over time. So how does it go over time? See, in Nigeria, um, it's, it's between one and two, and then um, starts getting low, the basic reproduction number after, let's say, some time, and then it starts get goes up, and then um, the 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 one uh, I've, I've I've said uh, when I've discussed it or when I've explained, um, but the basic reduction number um, I've said when is um, above one, so it means uh, the disease is still spreading. But when it gets below one, then when the disease is under control. So if you look at the case in Nigeria. So it's um, up till um, here is kind of um, um, up to some in the beginning of May is still above one, but it starts getting closer to one. So um, and then see um, the more data available, what what do they may see in the future? And then in Iraq, in some way, it gets uh, upset in some way in the um, let's say when the number of cases in Iraq. In some way, it gets a kind of peak, but then uh, later, again, it rises the number of cases. So see, here it gets below one, but then starts to um, uh, increase the number of uh, reproduction number. So that was um, all about my today's talk. Um, hope you enjoyed the talk. And then this is kind of um, a conclusion. Um, infection, that's what I've discussed. Uh, infection disease out there have a characteristic shape that can be generated with a simple infectious disease out, as I said, just in two or three compartments, you can catch the whole um, shape. Or, uh, as I said, um, the more you introduce new compartment, the more, um, what you call, accurate result, or the more you can tell the public health or the government what, uh, what, what can, um, let's say, control measures they may um, introduce. So, uh, so which is additional, uh, you, you can just, um, um, what do you call, assume um, that if you have, let's say, um, lockdown or any other compartment and then see uh, what, what's going on, or what's, what will happen in the future or, what, uh, or how, um, how can the number of cases might be um, affecting if you introduce those um, compartments. Then you can tell a mathematician um, can tell the government that um, if you introduce that kind of, um, let's say, uh, measures, that, that might be um, the, uh, the, the number of infected um, cases might be reduced. So that's um, uh, the, the, um, the, the useful of uh, math in those days, which is really, um, they do rely really on mathematicians in the, um, the so, so some countries. So, and then models can be used to forecast for and predict the effect of intervention. 
throughout the, um, let's say, out there. So I will um, um, open the, uh, please, um, Dr. Mahmoud, um, we can open the session for the um, questions if um, they may have. Thank you, Bhutan, Dr. Bhutan, for the presentation. Not that I'm a mathematician, so um, some things made a lot of sense to me and some, yeah. <laughs> so um, the floor is now open for questions. Uh, you can type your question if you have any. And before that happens, if I may ask you, um, so all these things that you mentioned with uh, equations and everything, is this something that you can just do uh, uh, using a, a computer, or is this something that you can put it into a particular algorithm or something that it does to you? No, um, um, what, what we are really doing um, is, um, as I said, um, at the end of the, what you call um, adding new compartment, we're trying to get the data so um, and then the, the data and then we, we see um, whether uh, we try to then simulate. Uh, first, we um, write down the model and then later um, we'll um, collect the data and do some um, statistics. And then uh, later we do simulations and then write a program for it. So um, it depends on um, the, uh, what you call uh, how many of our uh, compartments that we have. Uh, so there's a lot um, kind of um, packages in the MATLAB on the Maple or in the what you call R software. Mm. Are there the mm. people they they use it to um, let's say uh, forecast or predict the future? They just put mm. in the data and then they, it, it tells you um, what you call the future data or the future um, uh, prediction, right? Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Um, so there are a few people asking, can we have a PDF of the presentation? Actually, this is my friend who sent this question. So, Bhutan, I hope uh, you yeah. would, uh, Sure, so. um, you can just uh, get, get the email uh, for those that are asking the presentation, um, let's say PDF, I can then uh, send it there. All right. Sure. Uh, uh, I think the other person was also asking for the same thing. Uh, so that's not a problem. So while we wait for another, okay, so there's this question. Um, so the, this guy said, as I hear, is there any difference between basic reproduction number and effective reproduction number? So yeah, basic reproduction number, that's what um, we are trying to do in the, uh, in the beginning of, um, let's say, outbreak or in any time, but um, not over time, I mean, we just uh, when it's in a specific of time, but effective reproduction number is uh, during time, right? So every day we're trying to find another reproduction number, which has become um, effective reproduction number, right? It's over time. And then the mm. other one is just in specific time. Fantastic. Uh, so we have another question from Busari, he said, how do you solve the model and stimulate the model and which best software to solve those mathematical models? So for, um, for simulation, the models, um, as I said, um, as, uh, as, uh, if it's mathematician asking about that, they can um, first um, can um, introduce the model and then later they're trying to solve an analytically, which is they get some um, analytical solution out of it. Because if you look at the SIR model, it's not that difficult. You can solve it. It's just a system of three equations. You can um, easily solve it. But um, then, then uh, after you solve it analytically, then you can use um, um, what you call a simulation. So you can use MATLAB, which is lots of, um, uh, I mean, uh, codes are there in the, um, let's say, uh, you can Google it, you can find lots of softwares um, or lots of codes to, so, to uh, simulate those SIR models. Okay. And so, if they need um, help, they, they can email me, can help them. Oh, that's good. So if you need help, um, yeah, he's happy to help. Um, so before we get another question, I was thinking, so you, know, you said that um, you collect the data from the World Health Organization's website. Uh, 
I was thinking, do, can you put something in your model that will kind of um, uh, mimic some noise? So, for example, we know that maybe the cases might be more than uh, what is reported in the World Health Organization website because of the absence of testing. So maybe you might have, be having like 100 cases per day, but because of no testing, you know, you end up just getting like 20, 30. So in your models, is there any way to just mimic that thing that might be happening, which you cannot tell based on uh, data? That so you that, that's, that's the big problem um, with the modeling, because uh, it's just kind of, um, we are in the earlier, um, let's say, um, stage of the outbreak. Um, so um, in the absence of data, we cannot do, let's say, or we cannot predict, right? We need to have mm. a data then to predict. Mm. But for mm. those cases that my some countries, um, no, I mean, not accurately um, having tests or not accurately putting those data in those, let's say, online, um, mm. you can you can get it in the their government. For example, in Nigeria, um, mm -hmm. they may have um, more accurate data and as a government than mm. the WHO. So they can get it from there. So, and then they can uh, model more accurately because the having more information um, mm. uh, it gives you more, what you call accurate, um, those curves or accurate, uh, let's say, projection for the future. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, so there's a comment from Anupam Dutta. Uh, he said, very cro close relationship with graph theory. So I'm not sure whether this is a comment or a question, but if it is a comment, um, then I think said, I think yeah, the graph theory um, is kind of connecting all these nodes with the vertices and edges. But um, um, what we are doing is here is the differential equation. We're just um, putting um, what you call uh, those compartments in the um, let's say kind of a graph, um, so that um, non-mathematician can understand what's all this um, let's say um, susceptible and compartment uh, stands for. So that's why we put in that. Otherwise, it's um, a differential equation. Okay. So there's a comment from Sandeep Sharma. Uh, it, he said it's a very informative session, Dr. Sandeep from Indus International University. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we've got another comment. It's very interesting and make it easier uh, process to understand. Um, yeah, I think. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All right. So I think we haven't got uh, any more questions, but a few people have dropped their emails, which I'm happy to send them the PDF. So perhaps you can just send me the PDF and I can send it to all those people that registered. And I also take these emails and uh, forward it to them just in case if they didn't register. Um, yeah, I think apart, uh, apart from that, perhaps you know, we should just call it a day. It's been a great presentation. Okay, thanks. Thanks, yeah, so. thanks uh, Dr. Mahmoud. Thanks for that. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. My regards for all the, I, I hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, I don't have any other things to say. So thanks a all lot. All right. We should hope be saying enjoyed. thank you to you. Thank you for sparing your time. And uh, thank you to the audience from all around the world who listened to the presentation. So bye-bye uh, for now. Bye. Thank you.